So I think we found the offense. I don't know where you were hiding it. Did you just, before going on a road trip, did you just leave it behind? Was it in the snack bar where Joe Haggerty gets his hot dogs? Or was it locked in a broom closet somewhere in Keith Robinson's equipment room? But you found it. You left it at home, apparently, which is great. As the Boston Bruins, yet again, playing the Philadelphia Flyers, the second of a series, as these are all pretty much going to be home 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 series and then um you know moving on to a different team that's just the way the NHL works in this 56 game limiting travel way it works so Boston looking to build off of the momentum of their last game where they scored four in one period the most offensive production of the season for Boston so can they finish some scoring chances in the first period because that's been an issue but more importantly, can they continue the success? Find out. Bruins. Recap show. We start things off in the first period. It's Yaroslav Halak taking on Carter Hart. Carter Hart, his second game against the Bruins this year. Um, just let's get this out of the way right quick. Danton Heinen picking up a point, but it doesn't matter. Because uh, I will just do this for the end of this game. So here's your scoreboard. It's starting to be a blowout. So a little bit of housekeeping note. Matty Grizzly, he is out of the lineup, which means it's the debut of Cliffy Hockey. Connor Clifton in the lineup. Tread Frederick gets the move. He goes up to the third line, which means 11, 12, and 13 all on the same line. That would be Frederick, Smith, and Coyle. Anders Bjork, number 10, he drops to the fourth line. I didn't, I don't see, you know, Bjork being playing to the point where he needed to be demoted. Frederick's been really, really good on the fourth line. Um, so I think you could pretty much interchange these guys and they kind of give you similar production. Although Frederick has looked really, really good and Anders Bjork has just not gotten the results. He's played well, but hasn't gotten any results. Anyway, in the first period, and Mark Friedman of the Philadelphia Flyers, he gets called for hooking two minutes for you can't do that. And the Boston power play does what the Boston power play does as it's a face-off puck battle scrum and in, in off the face-off. The Bruins get the puck. Nick Ritchie gives it to Charlie McAvoy. McAvoy gives it to David Krejci. David Krejci takes the shot. It gets deflected. It hits a bunch of traffic. Nick Ritchie causing chaos in front of the net. Patrice Bergeron gets the puck and puts it in. one nothing hockey game. And the Bruins score in the first period, which is something they have really struggled to do. Overall, great period from the Boston Bruins. Um, pretty well played all game. They outshot the Flyers 10-4 in the first. We go to the second period with a one nothing lead. As you would expect from the Philadelphia Flyers, they come into the second period with a big response a minute 14 seconds into the period, and it's Patrice Bergeron, a pass intercepted by Kevin Hayes. Kevin Hayes puts a little stop and, stu stop and go move on Jake DeBrusque. Poor DeBrusque. Uh, ended up going for a line change afterwards anyway. But Kevin Hayes takes the puck all the way, gains the zone, passes it back over to Voracek. Jacob Voracek takes a shot and gets tipped by Kevin Hayes because good things happen when you go to the front of the net. It beats Halak and it's a 1-1 game. And what you want from the Boston Bruins is not for them to cave and cower after a response from your opponent. You want them to respond to the response. One minute, 16 seconds later from the goal from Kevin Hayes and it's Craig Smith on a breakout pass from Jeremy Lausanne to Charlie Coyle. Gains the zone, passes it back to Smith. Smith takes the shot, ends up hitting a bunch of bodies in front, including Charlie Coyle. Trent Frederick on the net drive. Coyle gives a nice little backhand pass to Craig Smith. His first as a Boston Bruin. 2-1. The Bruins immediately respond after the Flyers goal, and they would just pile it on from here. As later in the second period, and the, that third line, that 11-12-13, combines again. Craig Smith with a nice little chip off the boards to Trent Frederick. Frederick gives a pass to the front of the net, and 
what can you say about this from Charlie Coyle? Just poke and it's in. A one-handed tip in from Charlie Coyle makes it a 3-1 hockey game. A great response from the Boston Bruins putting two. They, you know, they ex- they ga- regained the lead and then they extended it in the second period, which is what you want to see playing well against a really good Philadelphia Flyers team. Up 3 to 1, you are expecting a response from the Flyers in the third period. Oddly enough, though, that response doesn't come from the Flyers as it is all Boston in the third period. As we get a Lausanne steal of Kevin Hayes, he passes it up to Brad Marchand, takes the shot, he misses, but Jake DeBrusque winning puck battles. He gets the puck off the rebound, finds Patrice Bergeron, who flings it over to a wide open Brad Marchand in the slot, makes it 4-1. to one. And then a little bit later on, it is Friedman again getting an unsportsmanlike call penalty, not helping his team out at all as a depth defenseman. Boston going to the power play, and the power play looking lethal. As David Krejci gets a, gives a low to high pass to Jakob Zaborl, over to Nick Ritchie. Cross ice pass, beautiful pass from Ritchie, even better finish as Brad Marchand skates into his back snapshot. My goodness, what a shot, what a power play. What a setup. 5-1. Brad Marchand, second of the game on the power play. A little bit later on, another power play attempt for the Boston Bruins. Charlie McAvoy gives it over to Brad Marchand. Shot coming in. It's saved by Carter Hart. There's a juicy rebound in front. Sandheim can't get to it because he's occupied with Nick Ritchie in front of the net. Patrice Bergeron beats everyone else to the puck. Gets the rebound. Puts it in. 6-1. Patrice Bergeron, second of the game, his second on the power play. And the Boston Bruins annihilate the Philadelphia Flyers. A 6-1 victory, an offensive explosion from a team that was struggling offensively early in this season. Take four points on at-home ice away from the Philadelphia Flyers and jump themselves up in the standings to second place. Yes, we're talking about standings. I know we are only five games into this season, but we're talking about standings. There's only 51 more games to go. So, odd statistic. At home, the Boston Bruins have yet to lose to the Philadelphia Flyers since 2000 or 2011, 2011. That makes the Boston Bruins the equivalent of the Washington Capitals for the Philadelphia Flyers. If you are a Boston fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you are not, the Boston Bruins do not play well against the Washington Capitals and historically haven't. Anyway, let's go quickly to your three stars of the game. Star number one, I mean, I could have gave it to anybody in this line, but the third line looked really well. But Charlie Coyle, a goal and an assist tonight. Finally showing up on the scoreboard. He found his offense at home as well. Star number two, two power play goals and an assist for Patrice Bergeron. And your number one star of the game, obviously. Two goals and an assist. One goal on the power play. Brad Marchand, just a beautiful shot. What can you say? The top line's producing. The power play's producing. You're getting good goaltending. This is a full 60 minute effort from the Boston Bruins here tonight and the beautiful part of this is if you look at the time on ice for all the forwards how how wonderfully balanced it is I think Patrice Bergeron who led the team on time on ice it was about like 16 minutes 39 seconds on ice just perfect perfect if you can have that be that way Anyway, next up for the Boston Bruins, Tuesday night, they get the Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and they're like on home ice, so hopefully the offense will continue to be productive against a a Pittsburgh Penguins team that's looked good but not great, Um, but we'll see. Anything can happen. It's a weird and wacky division, so yeah. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. I'm really bad at saying that at the end of videos, 
but I think I shall do it now. Hit that thumbs up, ring the ding ding the bell, and all that fun YouTube stuff. So we'll see you next time Tuesday night for the Bruins and the Penguins on the next Bruins Recap Show.